The SK project of SK Mining has seen over $40 million worth of exploration since the 21B zone was found back in 1989. What is SK Mining doing to rethink the potential in light of a disappointing exploration history? Well, the SK Mining project uh, has, has a long exploration history involving numerous companies going back to the 80s, all of them with little bits and pieces of it. Uh, uh, the, the, the project got significant attention in 1989-90 when the Atomic High claims uh, resulted in the discovery of the 21B zone, which became the SK Creek Mine. And that property is now owned 100% by Skeena, which is showing that uh, although the uh, contact mudstone associated uh, uh, 21B zone has been mined out, the feeder system below has sufficient gold and to be worth mining. But even more importantly, there are lower mudstone horizons uh, earlier horizons that also show the MS style replacement mineralization. And so it's looking at that whole land package with the perspective showing, wow, that if, if you if you chase this down stratigraphy, you're going to find an awful lot more. And the the SIB Lulu claims, which were to the south, which a couple of juniors uh, explored in that uh, in, in sort of the uh, early early 90s, that ended up becoming part of the what's now SK Mining Corp. They had the Cory project to the south. Originally, uh, they only had 80% of the Sib Lulu project. And the previous operators probably spent $30 million co collectively on that big land package in 20. 2016-17 SSR option, the 80% portion, spent $8 million or so, but pulled out at the end of 2018 because the theory they had for finding uh, well, where the uh, the Lulu zone was attached to, it was believed to have been but, uh, through, through a thrust fault detached from its source. They just couldn't figure it out, so, so they gave up. And it was in late 2019 that Mac Balcom, uh teamed up with uh, Quentin Henney, and Quentin Henney brought in Thomas Monarchy, who's a, 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 an expert in VMS systems, and he brought in his protege, Jean de Decker. And so the three of them started to do a complete rethink of this entire district. Last year, they were able to do a deal with with uh, with, with uh, Kirkland Lake on the 20% uh, interest and convert that to an S. NSR. So they now own 100% of this 25, 30 kilometer long, 10 kilometer long package. And the key thing that John De Decker has done is he's figured out the architecture of this project. The, and this is going through detailed work, going through all the historical work, compiling it, very, very tedious work. And in its original form, this was a, a, a marine basin between an island arc and 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 the continent and it underwent a period of stretching or rifting which caused cracks to open and hydrothermal systems to emerge and these created the the uh the, the vms smoker systems that laid down the deposits uh was such as sk creek and sk creek is actually the last gasp of this event after that it got paved over by a uh, by, by the Willow Creek basalts, and then that became uh, uh, filled in with the Bowser Lake sediments, and nothing else has happened in this area since then. But this went through several periods of activity, quietness, um, all, all within this marine setting, uh, uh, various volcanic uh, flows happening. Uh, and then what happened is there was more compression period. It folded, and then more compression, and then there was thrusting of these folds. And what uh, John de Decker has figured out is that there are three anticlines, north-south anticlines, and SK Creek sits in the main one, the middle one, the SK anticline. And the trick now is to find those horizons within this uh, thrusted and folded stratigraphy where these mudstone horizons exist. And the work they've done on the TV, TV and Jeff zone, and that received most of the drilling last year, uh, 98 holes, uh, they, they, they've re re received only about uh, 60% of the uh, assays for them. Most of the drilling went into that, and it's helped them understand that these VMS deposits were being formed at different periods within this basin. 
And so you have a scenario where there could be VMS-type deposits at multiple le levels of the stratigraphy. And there is not yet a major discovery there. The, the work they've done on TV uh, uh, this year, the work, they, the drilling that they did has sort of shown that Jeff probably isn't going to make it. TV, they're still trying to sort it out. But they've got these SkyTem targets, uh, 12 of them in the vicinity of which, uh, and, and of course the TV is one of them. And this came through the geophysics that they applied when they took charge of the uh, project. And they only got around to drilling one of those last year. And uh, it's uh, got a pending assay. It's described as a feeder-type stockwork mineralization. They, they see enough in it to know it's going to run something. Uh, the market's waiting to see how much to see if it's you know, really interesting, especially with gold, which you can't see uh, just from the visuals. You can see silver potential, but not, not the gold potential. But this is in a, in, in, in a higher stratigraphy and it opens up the other SkyTem targets, these pimples that you'll see on their, on their diagrams. They built platforms on all 12 of them. They didn't have time to drill any. They got chased out of their way too soon. Uh, so they're, they're going to try and get in there in June and resume drilling on these dozen targets. They'll go in and also look at the at that do more drilling on the TV, but the market doesn't really care about because that's now again the brute force stitching together of, of, of just one, one feeder, feeder system. But they've also got results pending. They've drilled about six holes outside this area. They've got in the southern part, they've got the, uh, the C10 Vermilion area where when they look closer, they now have a new VMS center there. They've got some holes pending there that could be very interesting. And also in the Scarlet Ridge area in the northeast, which is opposite to the east of SK Creek, where they realized that this whole area was mismapped, and, and it's the uh, eastern limb of this sequence of folds. They've got surface values pending. They already know that the, they've seen outcrop and says this is a very interesting area. Only part of it to the south was explored. They have a huge bleg anomaly in this area. So they'll be going in there as soon as possible. In the southern part, that's a more to, to higher terrain, uh, terrain challenged area. So they'll be able to go in there later in the summer. So this company, SK Mining, has uh, rethought this entire district on which all this money was spent without really coming up with a proper discovery hole. And they now have a plan to go back in there this time without having to build pads and everything, this time to go in there and hit it hard and set the stage for not just one major uh, 21B zone style discovery, but provide evidence of multiple such discoveries. So this is a complete district rethink in a very fertile area surrounded by existing uh, world-class mines. And again, this is the sort of story that you want to be following in this uh, beginning of a bull market for the resource juniors.